Hey everybody, it's secondary condition time. Let's talk about mental health. Now, before I start talking about mental health and how mental health can be a secondary condition, it's really important that everybody understands primary and secondary are just different ways of understanding how a current condition is actually related to something that happened to you in service and how your current service connected conditions actually may cause other problems down the road which you can also get service connected one of the big ones is mental health and we don't often think about this necessarily but it can be a consequence of a lot of different things that your body is going through. For instance, there are studies that show that men are 50% more likely to develop anxiety after they have received a prostate cancer diagnosis. And this makes total sense. So if you're a veteran who was exposed to chemicals at Camp Lejeune or Agent Orange or even the Gulf War and you've developed prostate cancer, you may apply for service connection for prostate cancer and get a rating for that ultimately. You may also, if you've developed the anxiety because of that, you may also want to apply for an anxiety condition. Now, likewise, for folks who have been physically injured, it's very, very common that a physical injury and facing the lifelong consequences of no longer being as physically able to do what you were once able to do can cause things like depression. If you're not sleeping well because of back pain or neck pain or shoulder pain, uh, that may cause depression, may cause anxiety, and may cause a lot of different issues. Again, it's, it's, it's quite common to develop, to go from one thing to the next. Your tinnitus is causing anxiety because you can't sleep at night. That may be a valid secondary condition to claim. So where does this leave us? First, if you find yourself maybe mentally not in the best place, get help. Please rely on those resources that are out there. Go to the VA, look for whatever avenue you can. I like uh, Operation Headstrong, which is an organization that, that my firm has referred a couple clients to, and I, I hope to support more someday. But there are a lot of resources out, that, resources out there, and we encourage you to go out and get those resources. But the next thing is, is to perhaps, if you have one of these conditions, like cancer or an orthopedic condition that's causing a lot of pain and disrupting your life, and when you're in treatment, is to apply for service connection for those conditions. And note, when you apply for it, that it might be secondary to one of your physical conditions or your cancer diagnosis. Now, some folks out there will say, well, you need to wait until your primary condition is service connected first, and then you can apply for the other stuff. And that's not true. It's not true at all. If a condition is secondary and it gets denied because the primary condition hasn't been, hasn't been proven yet, or you don't have service connection for it yet, you can always appeal and then you're keeping the same effective date. So again, don't wait to apply for secondary connections. Don't try to hack that system that way. It doesn't make sense. But the big takeaway is watch out for your mental health. If you're living with chronic pain or a cancer diagnosis or something else that has seriously impacted your life, you may have a mental health condition that is compensable as a secondary condition and you might want to apply for it. If you have any questions uh, about a decision that you've gotten from the VA and you would like help appealing it, reach out to our firm and, and we'd be happy to help. Until next time, take care.